Well, good morning, everyone, and thank you all for joining us for this webinar, which is entitled 508 Compliance, Is Your PEGA Application Successful? We appreciate you taking some time and hope that you will enjoy and find this uh, the session to be uh, very worthwhile. What I would like to do first is just quickly introduce our speakers, starting with myself. Um, and I'm the one with the video on. My name is John Pickerel. I am the Chief Revenue Officer for Sky Solutions, which means that I am responsible for uh, sales and marketing for the organizations. I lead both of those functions. Also speaking today will be um, Neil Boinapali, who is our uh, principal of Sky Solutions. And it's Anil's vision and leadership that has helped grow this organization that we are so proud to represent. Um, and also uh, speaking will be Jack Cochran. He is a senior PEGA architect, and he is actually um, one of our PEGA leads in our center of excellence, our PEGA center of excellence. Jack's actually been leading an internal team dedicated to the development of our 508 compliance solution, which all of you will see a little bit later in our webinar. So just for some quick housekeeping before we get started, um, we certainly welcome your questions. And as you think of them, what I would encourage you to do is to use the chat function within WebEx. If everybody wouldn't mind keeping yourself muted um, because of the size of the, uh, the audience of the folks that are joining us today. Uh, but please feel free to use the chat function, type in your questions, and we will make sure that they get addressed at the end. We have a lot of time at the end for questions and answers. And if your question needs a little bit more thorough explanation or thorough answer, we would obviously be happy to follow up with you after the webinar one on one. Um, but with that, um, we thought it would make sense to tell you just a little bit more about Sky Solutions and who we are and why we even care about 508 compliance and why do we decided to dedicate resources and de develop a solution for this particular issue. So to tell you about that, I'm going to turn it over to our principal, Anil Boynapal. Good morning um, and thank you, John, for your kind words. Uh, I'm excited to see all of you joining today's webinar. Uh, before we get started, I would like to quickly introduce Sky Solutions and who we are. Sky Solutions empowers enterprises to become digital first by implementing innovative solutions that simplifies critical and complex business processes. Our mission is to empower people to do the extraordinary things through technology by empowering enterprises to do the extraordinary things and rethink their approach to technology to solve problems and connect with their customers. With that mindset, we started to choose right technology platform and partners uh, since the beginning of our organization. So we chose PEGA since we started and implemented PEGA platform uh, since 2008 and our existence of our company. Over a decade, we helped multiple public sector healthcare and financial services customer to implement PEGA platform. We are a minority owned and uh, SBA 80 certified company, and we hold multiple GSA contracts to do the business with the government. We are a proud PEGA Silver partner and have more than 50 on-site certified PEGA consultant serving government customers. We tend to believe that um, you know, we have a very large footprint in public sector. With that said, why do we care about 508? 25% of our population has some form of disability and disability is going to touch most of our lives at some point, whether by accident, by disease, by aging, or just by the fact that living longer. Most of us have friends, our family members have some kind of disability. With this large population, when we are building digital first application, we deeply care about the disability. We ask ourselves how this would work, someone with blindness or some um, form of other challenges would access this application. How do we include in our community as people, they have a right to participate, building application to accessible to every and by that everyone will get benefit. We're not addressing this problem because it is a law or a regulation, but we truly believe that this is the right thing to do. And as I mentioned, our mission is to empower people to do the extraordinary things through technology. 
We are at Sky Solutions, believe that everyone has the right to fully participate in this digital first journey. It is becoming important every facet of life, like working from home and other means to deliver services. I'm excited about this and we think you all will also enjoy listening and seeing what we have put together for this webinar. I look forward to receive your feedback and with that, I'm going to give this back to John. Thank you very much. Anil. So let's talk about the agenda. Let's tell you what we're going to cover today. First of all, we're just going to talk about section 508 101. What is it? Who has to comply, et cetera? Then we'll talk about PEGA and section 508. Why is, what is so unique about making PEGA applications compliant with the section 508 standards? And finally, we'll tell you a little bit about what we've done to try to address this problem by creating a unique 508 offering, which is not just services, but we actually have some um, proprietary tools that we've developed, which we will also show you. But first, let's go ahead and talk about Section 508 and what we call Section 508 101. What is Section 508? Well, Section 508 was actually made part of the Rehabil Rehabilitation Act of 1973 in 1998. It requires federal agencies to make their electronic and information technology accessible to people with disabilities. There was actually a refresh of this Section 508 in January of 2017, which updated the accessibility guidelines and requirements for both information and communication technology in the federal sector. So who must comply with Section 508 standards? Who does it affect? Well, the guidelines actually affect all federal agencies, as well as any company that does business with a federal agency. This includes private contractors, the financial industry, healthcare organizations, many legal organizations, and partners of those agencies operating in the United States or abroad. So what are the risks for noncompliance? Well, there's two, the two biggest risks really are reputational risk and financial risk. The first risk of reputational risk really, you know, Anil addressed when we talk about, you know, making your applications 508 compliant is truly, we feel, just the right thing to do. He mentioned that, you know, one in four of all Americans has some type of disability, and about half of those are considered to be severe disabilities. So by ignoring the accessibility needs of your audience, there's just a population, a, a tremendously large population that is just being underserved. But the other risk that get people's attention is the financial risk. It could be very costly to be non-compliant with Section 508. Just one example of that is the U.S. Small, Small Business Administration was sued by the National Federation for the, of the Blind and had to pay nearly $5 million to become compliant with Section 508, in addition to paying significant legal, legal fees. So now that we, you know, we know how to, you know, that it's important to be compliant, let's talk about PEGA and Section 508. And what is unique about PEGA applications that makes them a little bit more different, uh, difficult to be compliant with Section 508? Well, as I mentioned, and Anil mentioned, we have been supporting the pu public sector in particular for the past several years, and we quickly realized that being compliant with Section 508 standards was a consistent challenge on nearly all of our government engagements. Yeah. And we noticed yeah. that there are four common roadblocks to developing PEGA applications that are 508 compliant. The first one is just a lack of understanding of Section 508 standards. The standards themselves are very detailed and specific, and most of us just don't know those specifics. Many don't even realize that there was a refresh of the standards back in 2017. So that lack of understanding, um, it tends to draw, it tends to be a significant roadblock. The second is just the nature of PEGA as a tool. You know, Anil mentioned it is obviously a, it's a, a focus of our business supporting PEGA implementations and developing PEGA applications. And the strength of the platform obviously is, is uh, the, the nature of it being a low code tool, but its strength can actually be a weakness when it comes to developing applications that are 508 compliant. Because so much of development is automated um, in the PEGA tool, a lot of developers particularly are not used to doing front end development because they don't have to. 
and may not have the aptitude to do the types of um, modifications that are necessary uh, for the UI to make it compliant with 508 standards. The, the third um, issue that we often see is a lack of guardrails that are in place. And this comes from generally the first two issues. Um, if there's a lack of understanding of the, the Section 508 standards, then it's not built into um, setting up you know, setting up guardrails and setting up standards and processes that will lead to 508 compliance. And this tends to lead to the fourth roadblock, which we see commonly, which is procrastination. Most times if, if um, a project is being run without the necessary 508 expertise, they will just often wait till the end to see if they can figure out a way to make an application compliant. And that tends to be the most difficult time to do it, because if you try to make changes to a UI of an application at the very end of the process, you're often left with a very difficult decision. Do I want to be 508 compliant um, or do I and, and completely change the look and feel of the application, which you know doesn't necessarily meet all of the business needs? Or do I just keep the current look and feel and take the risk of being not being non-compliant, which is not not a, a very good choice to have to make. So with that, we have developed uh, at Sky Solutions a very straightforward approach to addressing this problem. It's what we call our, our 508 per, for PEGA solution, very simply. Um, so how are we addressing these roadblocks? We, first of all, set out with the goal of helping our clients address this quickly and inexpensively through developing the right process, methodology, and even developing some tools to automate the process as much as possible. So there are four simple aspects of our solution, and the process starts with an assessment to look at an application and find all the areas that have issues with uh, complying with the Section 508 standards, and then coming up with a strategy to address those issues. Um, and of course, moving right into remediating the, the remediating the issues and make sure that the application is compliant. And finally, putting in place enforcement, putting those guardrails in place and set, establishing those best practices so that even after future changes are made to an application, it will continue to be compliant with Section 508. So in, uh, you know, I mentioned this is the process, but we have also dedicated internal resources to actually developing our own proprietary, proprietary tools, which will become available for licensing to help simplify this process for our customers. So what I'd like to do now is turn it over to Jack Cochran, who has been leading this team, and he's going to be demonstrating just a few of the highlights of version one of these unique tools that we have developed. Jack? Jack, I think you're still on mute. Oh, I see. Oh. Are you there? Oh, good morning, everyone. Good morning. There we go. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you now. Thank you. <laughs> uh, okay, yeah, I was sorry about that. I was muted on the WebEx. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, thanks, John, for that intro. Um, add on to what John was saying and to show Sky Solutions' commitment to addressing this challenge, we have dedicated time and resources to creating technical assets that operate as a toolkit to help move a PEGA application into 508 compliance. These tools come with a small framework that can be added to a PEGA application that either fix commonly occurring existing issues or guide developers slash project managers in understanding where they stand with 508 compliance. Now, Pega Systems is aware of the accessibility issue and has incorporated some tools to help address this. One such example is the Pega Accessibility Rule Set, which can be added to an application and corrects or enhances many of the gaps that exist within the Pega platform. The problem with this accessibility rule set is that there are many projects that are not fully aware of the hurdles of 508 compliance and wait to the late stages to implement the accessibility rule set. And so the rule set acts as a one-stop fix-all measure it not only makes corrections, but also changes the look and feel of the application that may go against already existing business requirements. So 
Many projects make the choice of turning off this rule set and take on the full risk of getting their application not being within 508 compliance. In this upcoming demo, the tools that Sky Solutions has created are able to correct many of the gaps that occur within PIG applications, but with the benefit of more control of the specific functionality. Now, the ability to navigate through an application via only a keyboard and a screen reader is a major component of 508 compliance. Pega out of the box has issues with setting focus between major elements on the screen. This initial part of the demo will show the corrections that we have implemented to fix these major concerns. Okay. Um, so now starting off by launching the case manager portal, which is one of the common user portals within Pega, we come to the initial landing page, which already shows one of our added fixes. The focus is noticeable and set on the first workable element on the page. From this point, we're able to navigate completely throughout the page by tabbing. Notice the focus is easily recognizable on the elements it comes across. Now, one of the major concerns that comes with Pega is the loss of focus that occurs when jumping between pages or modal pop-ups. We'll now move up to the top left corner of the screen to initiate a Pega pop-up to showcase a return of focus to the icon. One more time, we tab through the top header bar to pop up for notifications. Once again, upon exiting the pop-up, the focus returns to the initiating icon. Now, let's demonstrate the new added ability of the focus to maintain the proper context of the page change. Let's go ahead and start a case. This is a basic customer collection case, and as you can see in the start, the focus goes to the first workable element. Now, let's go ahead and cancel this case. Normally, the context of the focus would be lost, but as you can see here, the focus returns to the corresponding menu item that represents the current page. So this time, let's actually continue forward through the case type. Move past the first page. Notice the focus now goes to the header of the section so they can easily be picked up by the screen readers. So let's enter in proper example user and continue through the case. Entering hthomas at example.com. You see the customer is verified. From this point, we are now able to tap through the application and enter in details to move the case forward. Notice again the consistency of the focus returning to the header of each section and the smooth ability to navigate through each input control. Our team has taken steps to make sure that the focus is easily identifiable on the page at all times. Now, on submission here, on this page, we want to demonstrate one of the biggest hurdles for those using navigation and screen readers. And that is the ability to read errors properly. So I'm going to go ahead and enter in faulty information in the card number field while picking a proper date using only tab. So on submit, notice that focus jumps to the error message at, top, at the top of the screen. So that the screen reader can now read the errors to the user. For this demo, we do not have the audio of the screen reader, but it would inform us that there's now a hotkey to jump to the specific error. So by clicking Shift E, we now jump to the error to correct and move forward. Now, what makes this different than the available PEGA accessibility rule set is the ability to turn on and off the individual functionality at a granular level. So let's go ahead and turn off the My App Focus functionality. So this was functionality shown earlier for clicking on the icon and displaying the menu. So going ahead and saving this to be off, returning to the Case Manager portal, we again click on the menu icon in the top left. Once again, tabbing through to the exit. Now, unlike last time, notice the icon is no longer in focus. Now, these additions help patch up the existing PECA projects. However, these there needs to be a set of tools to help developers understand where their application currently stands. 
let's go ahead and move into the next part of the demo, the evaluation demo. Pega Systems has tried to address this problem, and within the case manager portal, we can access the Pega Accessibility Inspector in the bottom right screen. Within the inspector, we're able to drill down on different elements of the screen that may be causing different issues, detailing possible concerns that could be issues from a screen reader. It also has the ability to qualitatively give the user a look into the perspective of an individual that may be colorblind. Now, this tool is somewhat limited in scope. For further detail, we can use a tool provided by the Social Security Administration called Andy. Now, Andy gives us more detail on the types of structures. We have the ability to pick between different HTML items and identify them on screen. So, changing to links here highlights all the links on the screens and tells us about the, any possible issues. Changing to color contrast, we see here we may have two possible issues. Now, we at Sky Solutions also wanted to get a deeper sense of what is happening on a page to give the developer that might not know where their current application stands an overarching evaluation tool. So we've implemented an activity which is familiar to Pega developers that when run gives us accessibility scores for single A, double A, and triple A. It also gives us a more detailed look at issues that were found on the page. It gives us the category of the issue, as well as the HTML element that has the issue. Now, the last component within our tool set is a way to guide developers into compliance while developing. This comes in the form of a simple guardrail warning within Pega. So going ahead and starting the enforcement demo, here, we have a section rule within Pega, which is the essential element for creating the UI. We'll go ahead and add a text input. Now, Pega has within it the ability to add helper text, which can be picked up by screen readers. So let's go ahead and not add any helper text and save the rule. And as you can see, we've added a warning guardrail message that describes the possible issue. Now, we left this informational warning as an informational warning to give the developer team many ways to correct the issue on the front end without penalizing their compliance score. Now, let's go back and add in the helper text, adding the descriptor first name. And upon resaving the rule, the guardrail warning disappears. As you can see, this ensures the developers are at least aware of the possible consequences of leaving the helper text blank. So this concludes the demo portion of our webinar. I'll now hand it over back to John for the QA section. Thank you very much, Jack. I hope you all enjoyed that very brief high level overview and a lot of things that to, to show you with the tools that we have developed. So we've left some time here for questions and answers, and I see that we have been, we have gotten at least one question and anybody that has a, another specific question, I, I encourage you to use the chat function. Um, please don't, don't hesitate to put in your, in those questions. And so I, so I see we have a couple to get started with. So, Jack, it looks like one of the first questions is, are you making important read-only information, such as labels here, readable by a screen reader? So, is that in regard to the guardrail warning, or is that from the initial um, going through the front end of the application? I believe it was so when to we give you an idea to go um, through the front end of the application it should be picking up the labels as is can you hit, can anyone hear me this is manaj oh yep we can hear you yeah so i saw um i saw you designed a farm um there were some labels import, uh, actually important like uh enter payment information for a blind user if the focus doesn't go there and if the screen reader, uh, reader doesn't read it, 
he has no idea what what he's doing unless you know he's um, he very much know the application well. So I'm, I'm wondering how how are you giving focus to important uh, labels like that? How how are they readable by Java? So uh, within Pega, if you update the helper text, so that last demo we just shown, if you update the helper text on the specific input field, it actually adds an ARIA tag, which can be read by a screen reader. No, no, I'm not talking so, about the controls. I'm talking about the labels. Um, oh, I see. Uh, so, yeah, so as once the focus is on the actual label, because of the HTML tag itself, it, it's identified as a label, the screen reader knows to pick it out. But labels are not focusable. <laughs> Uh, it is if you put certain tags around it. Yep. Uh, so I came up with a workaround. Um, so if you put labels in a dynamic layout and you have something on accessibility, um, we, you can pick up a role. We are using group. It works fine. I mean, it's focusable and it's readable by JAS. So that's how we are um, doing in our applications because we have quite a lot of important labels that user must need to know the labels. Uh, so that you can work on the farms. Um, so th that's why uh, it's a workaround. Right. So we did something similar where we put kind of like a almost a u unique control, or we found uh, a way to find them via an ID, and we specifically point the focus to that specific tag. Um, I don't see a, a unique ID problem because I think Pega uh, has done a great job. It's creating uh, pretty much for uh, for all. I mean, unique IDs for all your elements. And one more quick question: uh, Helper text it, it's not working for the drop downs. Um, I mean, did you guys uh, got, get a chance to check on that? It's working fine for all other controls except the drop downs. Uh, even if you put anything on the drop downs, it won't. Uh, sorry, not the drop downs. The, um, so for uh, date uh, controls, we get three drop downs, right? Month, year, and day. So for, uh, for those, uh, right. put whatever health text you need, it, it's not going to read them. So uh, um, did, did you get a chance to check on it? I mean, uh, uh, I think we so, will need to open a text. Well, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, so I think that, I think we have run into that issue. And when you, Apply the accessibility rule set. It actually changes the the that specific control because I think Pega has also run into that issue. It, it actually yeah. divides the control up into three different areas that can be read properly. Um, so we have run into that issue. Our plan was to kind of use what Pega has already kind of provided from the accessibility rule set and then try to snippet it out and then see if we can reuse that reformatted control. Thank you, Dr. Lahan. Thank you, Manoj, and thank you, Jack. So we're actually at, a, it's 11.31 now, and we promised to get everybody done uh, to, to finish the webinar in 30 minutes. So um, I want to thank you all again for taking the time to join us. I hope you enjoy the presentation. I hope you learned something. And if anyone would like any more information um, and have any more specific details that you'd like us to, to share with you, please don't hesitate to reach out to you. Um, we could just show our contact information on the next slide, Yanni. Um, but I hope that all of you um, have a terrific rest of your day. Stay safe and stay healthy. Um, and um, thanks once again for your time.